Hello again, everybody. Zach Attack is here with my WWE Raw review for this evening, Monday, December the 16th, 2013, the aftermath of TLC. This is my first Raw review in a couple weeks since I've been able to watch Raw in full length because I've been busy at my gigs at Jefferson Street Pub. I got laid off tonight because of the Lions game. I am watching the Lions game this moment. It's 15-10. Hope Lions come back, but I think they're going to choke yet again. After a great first half touchdown in the first quarter, but we're not here to talk about football. That's so what wrestling tonight, the TLC aftermath tonight. Well, it was a decent wall after a pay per view, some decent tag matches, and a great main event. What a bad ending. And that main event for tonight's wall will be made in our first segment. As Randy Orton, the new WWE World Heavyweight Champion, would come out to celebrate with all the superstars watching from the booth. It seems that every single time we've had this championship coronation ceremony for Orton, it's been like 10 of these fucking ceremonies. It feels like them. these ceremonies have happened throughout the year for Orton. Something always goes wrong. Someone interrupts. This time, it's always making a little speech about him being the best guy and beating Cena. Cena would be the one to uh, interrupt Orton. He's like, Orton, you are an idiot. Yeah, you won. Handcuffs. Classy. Clever. And Austin said it best in his promo. They had a promo with all the former champions. And, or, and Stone Cold Steve Austin said it best. You are a champion. You better butt up or shut up every night. So Orton, you should be in action tonight. But Orton's like, no, 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 Cena. You're not getting your rematch tonight. Cena's like, I'm not talking about me getting a match. Yes! 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 I'm talking about Daniel Bryan. Getting a match against Orton tonight. For the championship. So I, I, like I said, I haven't watched more in the last couple weeks because I've been busy with my gigs. So I missed the fact that Cena promised if he were to win the match at TLC, he would give a match to Daniel Bryan because the fans have been really chanting D. Bryan lead Happy the fans are giving a big F.U. to the authority in WWE for not pushing D. Bryan. But I think the authority finally listened tonight. Although, yes, they did decline or in Daniel for the title tonight. They did decide, however, to give Steve Bryan at least a chance to beat up on the champ to maybe win himself a future title match. So our main event would be Randy Orton against Steve Bryan. These two have fought off many times this year. Whether it's at SummerSlam, Night of Champions, Battleground, and Hell in a Cell. I'm glad Steve Bryan would get another shot to take on Orton tonight to prove that he should once again get another chance to be the face of the company, or at least be indeed. The WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Now, on the first match of the night, four down by the WWE fans. A poll on the website to determine the opponents tonight in a non-title match for the Tag Team Champions, Cody Rhodes and Goldust. Involving the three opponents in the Fatal 4-Way match last week, uh, last night at TLC, one of those teams would get a one-on-one -on -one match against the winning Tag Champs. And it was Rey Mysterio and Big Show. I was hoping for Rey Americans, but I knew the face team would get picked. And Big Show and Mysterio, they showed us last night. They had a great final series, but they were the final two teams with Cody Rhodes and Gold. That's a great series. That little fury last night, I was hoping for kind of a repeat of that. And it was kind of a repeat of that. Not as good as last night's final match in the Fatal 4 Elimination match. But still, decent match. Nonetheless, the Houston crowd was good last night. Decently crowd. Dallas crowd was decent tonight as well. Especially during this match. Goldust came in, of course, coming in with the, of course, the big fire in his belly. And on his chest, you know, the makeup and all that stuff. And, indeed, got on the offensive early. On Mr. Mysterio. Trying to go for the Zaska kick, even Cody would come in. But it was indeed a big show who came in. And really took advantage. As Cody got in eventually after... You know, Cody tagged in after Cody's tagged out. And Cody would just get isolated in the corner as being dominated by Big Show. The big knife edge chops. Really dominated with his big power. I think he and Mysterio are dominant force, especially as we would see with the ending of this matchup. After Cody got pummeled by Big Show midway towards the matchup, Cody got the gold dust tagging. And coming with some big moves on the Big Show. Even blocking a choke slam attempt, or at least getting a choke slam attempt, to Cody broke it up, took care of Cody, and then indeed got the big KO, big knockout on Goldust, tagging in Mysterio, 
Mysterio jumped up Big Show's arms, jumped off her with a big splash off her of Big Show, got the pin, one, two, three, victory for Rey Mysterio, and the Big Show. What could be a big matchup to maybe get the win here, they get the good win, could be a big match to get a future title match against the Tag Champions of Cody Rose and Goldust. They had a great series last night, that great final matchup in the Fatal 4 way. Mysterio and Big Show look like a dominant team this evening. It could be a force, but there's some new tag teams, especially a new tag team we would see later on tonight, that could also be a threat to the tag champs. I said it last night in my review, the tag team division is the strongest I've seen in a while. Underused teams like Usos and PTP, which I'll get to them when they were chosen, one of them was chosen to be uh, Punk's partners tonight in the sixth man with him against the Shield. At least it wasn't 3 1 again. A lot of teams in the tag team division, strongest I've seen in a while. And I'm just saying that. Now we're on to our next match. A lot of TLC related Wii matches. We had two teams that were involved in the Fatal 4 Way Tag match. Now we have the pregame Wii match from the pre show last night. Of course, did it. Fandango, Scalamoose, Scalamoose Dallas doing the Fandango. They would take on Dolph Ziggler. Now, of course, Fandango got the victory last night in the TLC pregame with a little help from somewhere distracting Mr. Ziggler. But this time around, Fandango would be the one to uh, feel the heat, should I say. With Ziggler coming in early, going for big dropkick moves, and trying to come and give revenge on the loss, trying to redeem himself, but the Fandango with his slide moves, trying to go for his big moves in the second half of this matchup, really slugging it out with Mr. Ziggler, and trying to go for the second win, beating Ziggler twice, in less than 24 hours. But after Fandango went for a leg lock and going for a big kick to end Ziggler, Ziggler caught that kick, rolled up Z Fandango. One, two, three. Ziggler gets the victory and the surprise wall. So there you go with that. Big win for Ziggler getting revenge and the losing to Mr. Fandango last night, avenging his loss. I'm watching the Lions game, so that's why I'm. You know, looking back and forth on the Lions game and all that. And uh, so there you go. Now, on to our next matchup. This could be a good, like I said, Ray Mysterio and Big Show's a good team. If these two really put their minds to it, these two would be a good tag team. The so called world's strongest tag team. The Intercontinental Champion, Biggie Langston, teaming up with the world's strongest man, Mark Henry, to take on the Ray Americans, Swagger and Cesaro, we the people. After the great showing last night in the tag team Fatal 4 despite their elimination, proving that they should once again be considered for a tag team title match, they would have to be in the fire with these two big guys. And indeed, Mo Kennedy, of course, threw his weight around in the early going. So, of course, Biggie Langston got in. And at 14 for the later half of the matchup, in a decent little tag match, Swagger. And of course, this all did what they did last night to Cody Rhodes, or should I say Goldust last night, isolated him in nail corner, and got the quick tags, ended up in really dominating on Mr. D. Langston in the later half of this matchup, proving once again why they should be a dominant choice for tag team channel contention besides the aforementioned Big Show and Ray Mysterio. But after Cesaro and Swagger got their big hits, of course, this being Texas and all, of course, Texas and Oklahoma has a big rivalry. So he had a lot of, oh, you sucks chance. And Mark well, Henry putting up the Longhorns for the University of Texas. The Longhorns. To diss the Okies from Muskogee. Of course, referring to Oklahoma or you. You know, Buddha Sumo, should I say. What was that OSU? I think it's OU and OSU, but whatever. Anyway. After the domination in the later half by Sasawo and Swaggy, of course, Biggie went tagging Henry with the hot tag. With some big moves, trying to go for his big, world strongest slam, until Sasawo would fought that decision. Big uppercuts from Sasawo during the match, as well as trying to go for it for the big swing. I was hoping he was going to get the swing on Mark Henry. I was hoping to see, because Sasawo's done the big swing to Kali and He's done it to do the soft calling! Anyway, sorry about the phone ringing tonight. A lot of people are calling here. Anyway, 
So, like I said, so Solo's was done the big street to Cali and Big Shot. I thought was going to do a volcano today, but he didn't. Instead, Langston thwarted that by blind tagging himself in, distracting Sol, getting the big ending after a big move. One, two, three, victory for Biggie Langston and Ball Kimmy, another team that could be considered for, for a tag team match, if tag team title match, if they really put their minds to it. They look like a dominant force. Like I said, the tag team division is stacked right now for the division. Big, huge division. So we'll see what happens in this division as it goes on. Now, on our next matchup, which would finally seal the heel turn for Bordis Clay. Now, if you didn't see my TLC review last night, of course, Bordis Clay was put in a match against All Troop I Like I said, I haven't seen Wall last couple weeks, but I did see like a bit of Wall that Bordis Clay has been developing an attitude lately towards All Troop and Xavier Woods, aka Cousin Christmas Queen from TNA. That Bordis Clay has gotten jealous about All Troop using the Fungadactors for one their matches, and it all came to a head last night when Bordis Clay just pummeled on all Troop. He wouldn't go for the pin. He basically just wanted to beat up all Troop. He didn't want to pin. He didn't want to win. He just wanted to beat up all Troop and really end his career. Turns out I had enough of Bordis' attitude. He walked off alone with the Funkadactyls, leaving Bordis' prey to all Troop's big kick and the wall up in the pin in the match last night. Turnabout's fair play. The old saying goes, but goes around, comes around. As we would see, as tons of folk would team up, trying to team up, against Wybaxel. Of course, Wyback, Goldberg, I mean Wyback, and Curtis Axel. With, of course, commentary team of Xavier Woods and Ultra Fit Ringside. Turn time, basically was pummeled throughout the entire match as a uh, Mr. Portis Clay, like I said, sealed his heel turn tonight. By doing the same thing that Tenzai did to him last night. Walk out on him. Don't tag in. And Tenzai basically got pummeled by both Wyback and Wyback and uh, Curtis Axel. When Buddhist Clay not wanting to help Tenzai as revenge for not helping him last night, Wyback went for his big move, the big meat hook, in a shell shot, in a 1 2 3 victory for the Wybaxel team with Buddhist Clay not helping. After the matchup, like I said, Bordis finally sealed the deal by delivering a post-match big splash on Enzai. The Xavier Woods and all truth who were at ringside for commentary had enough. They went in and beat up until uh, Mr. Bordis Clay taking him out of the ring. They had the Funkadactyls come in and dance because they they've been like involved in this drama with Clay and Tenzai. So Tenzai is now all alone now. If, I, if this is the case, Clay and Tenzai, tons of fuck is officially broken up. So we'll see what sweet teen Tenzai goes from here now that Bordis Clay is now going to be the big beast that he was supposed to be when he first debuted last year. But no, he had to be the big funk beast. Better no jail go tonight. Anyway, our next segment, CM Punk. Now, I've also been missing the show, like I said, once again, missing the show for a few weeks. So Punk's now angry again at the authority. Where have I seen this before? Oh yeah, two years ago. Punk is feuding with Triple H over this authority shit two years ago. You know, after money in the bank and when Kevin Nash screwed him at SummerSlam. CM Punk even fought Triple H at SummerSlam 20... Not SummerSlam 2011. United Champions 2011. They've had this problem before with this authority shit. Punk's always had problems with authority. Doesn't matter who it is. It's Triple H or John Law Lines. I've seen this all before. But it's kind of getting... St I love Punk, but it's getting a little stale. As Punk went off again on Triple H, you know, with his, one of his pipe bomb, and I'm happy that he beat up the Shield last night and wanted to take care of his issues with Triple H once and for all after slugging him last week, Shawn Michaels, the man who super kicked Punk after he slugged Triple H, would come out and say, I know you've had your problems, even Punk had a little slang in and Triple H, I mean, Stephanie come out. That was a nice little funny slag it. Because Triple H hides behind his wife. Once again, been there, done that. You know, Punk's already mentioned Stephanie in this performance. The last time Triple H and Punk fought over this authority nonsense. Wow! So I done that lions. Wow, what a catch. Like I said, watching this game, I'm making this video. So bear with me here, guys. Very intense, close game now. The Lions just getting a touchdown, 17 to 15. Man, it's going to be intense. These last minutes in this Lions game. But anyway, as Punk and Michaels would have a little conversation, you know, I don't think Sean's going to come out of retirement anytime soon, but still. Anyway, 
So many to do is Puck's opponents in this six man tag. The Shield trying to avenge their loss last night against Puck in the handicap match. He saw a big, big swelling on uh, Roman Reigns' eye. Still recovering from that little injury last night when he got waved against the announce table last night during their handicap match. And of course, the fans would choose who would Puck's partners be. They chose the Usos over the BTP and the Los Matadores. A lot of Usos fans, you know, ooh, so I like these guys. You know, Tag Team Division stacked, you know, maybe a little too stacked. Like, underused guys like the primetime players in Los Matadors. But I see Usos get some airtime. I wish it was PTP, but still, I like the Usos. And indeed, the Usos and Punk would come in with the fast-paced moves early on, dominating the early half of this decent matchup. But, of course, as we've seen time and time again with the Shield, you think they're down and out. But they always come flying back. Sly moves it, of course. The isolation in the corner of one of the Usos. And, of course, the Shield would take advantage for the later half of this matchup. Of course, Reigns would come in, try to recover from his little injury. But he still wrestled pretty well, despite the little eye injury. Following the isolation, as Jimmy would indeed get, of course, triple team, you know, isolated, quick tags in and out. The hot tag to Punk as the fans were chanting for Punk. Punk came in with a hot tag, coming in with a house of fire, delivering some big moves. Of course, going for the elbow and Ambrose, and the Uso started flying, flying and buying until indeed Punk had Ambrose ready for the go to sleep move. But then Rollins would come in, trying to distract him, and then Ambrose got the GTS. But Reigns tagged himself already in. Blind tagged himself in as Punk was setting up for the second attempt at TS. GTS. So not knowing that Reigns got tagged in, Punk delivered a GTS on Ambrose, then spear for Reigns in a 1 2 3 victory from the Shield, avenging their loss. And pulling the, pulling the pun on blind tag. You know, Reigns getting a blind tag. Get it? Blind, you know, the eye thing. Whip shot. Anyway, Shield gets a victory after the rain spear after the GTS on Ambos from Punk. So there you go. Shield once again win at any cost and avenge their loss against Punk from last night. A lot of people avenge their losses from last night, including, you know, Ziggler avenging his loss against Mr. You know, Fundango. Big Show and Rey Mysterio avenging their loss against. Cody Rhodes and Goldust in the Shield Avenging their loss last night against Bug by pinning him in this six man tag. Now, I would all Divas tag. A lot of tags tonight. We'd have another six person tag. Natalia to turn on Team Up in the Beltrans against Tamina and AJ and Alicia Fox. Like I said, I was channel so between this and the Lions game at the time, but still. Okay, Divas matchup. The Divas match has gotten somewhat improved. The Bella Trans have gotten somewhat better, but they ain't saying much. But I'll give one Bella credit for taking a nasty kick to the face by Tamina near towards the end of this matchup. Nasty kick. Man, it was like, snap. It was like, big. I think she may have broken her nose. Like, maybe like a, you know, uh, maybe a nose injury that one of the Bellas got. And of course, after that big kick shot, AJ would come in with a shiny wizard kick move in a 1-2-3 victory for AJ, avenging her loss, even though she didn't really pin the person where well, actually AJ didn't lose last night, but still, AJ got the last laugh after, you know, Tamina did all the damage. You know, it was a decent Divas tag match for what I saw, but a nasty kick for Tamina set up the AJ victory in the sixth Divas tag match. So, uh, there you go. Now on with our next um, scenario, next matchup. Before we get to our next matchup in our main event, we have, of course, next week being the war before Christmas, Christmas Eve, Eve, the day before Christmas Eve, you know, the 23rd, we have Bad Santa and Good Santa. Damien Santa down the Bad Santa, and Mark Henry the Good Santa. You saw a little promo with Mark Henry. Because that's how, that's what Santa, that's what Santa do! <laughs> that was funny. A little step right there, but we have Mark Henry again sent down next week. Like I said, the Battle of the Santas next week on Wall. Theories have some sort of silly Christmas episode. Every time there's a Christmas episode, Wall is always silly. 
Like the one time when Del Rio ran over Santa last year. God, that was silly and stupid. That was it last year or two years ago. They had that stupid little storyline. That was stupid. Oh, like I said, it's tough to watch the Lions game by making this. Especially, it was tough to flip between this and the Lions game with the main event game on. Radio on against, radio on against Daniel Bryan. Great main event tonight between these guys. You guys have wrestled many times in the last few months. I think this is probably the best match, especially with the crowd really into it. You know, crowd's been, like I said, bull Daniel Bryan lately. So that's where the authority finally listened to the fans and gave Orton this match against D. Bryan. And of course, the match got slow early. You know, both guys going for big takedowns and submissions and all that. Of course, Steve might be the submission guy, but it did. Orton with the look in his eyes. You know, the you know, being the Viper, the Apex Predator, the Legend Killer, whatever his nickname is this week. I always make fun of that every week. There is ten thousand nicknames. Orton would of course come in with the anger in his eyes, taking care of Brian, and really, he got a little cut from uh Mister Cena last night. Damn, Brian took advantage by opening it back up. And they also play dirty. With Randy Orton first biting Daniel Bryan's knee. But then d Bryan would come in by biting Randy Orton's face. Maybe he should bite his face shut since Randy Orton told everyone to kiss his ass during a pre-match interview. That was intriguing. You brought TV PG, Orton to say kiss my ass, Tammy Buddy. That was pretty funny. Anyway, even after that play dirty, Orton would of course weaken on Damian Bryan's injured arm. Really weakening it and really arguing it for the majority of this matchup, making Orton dominant throughout the later half of this matchup. But then, indeed, the last 20 minutes of this matchup were just very intense. Neil Falls, excitement, the fans going nuts for D-Bot. D-Bot would, of course, keep flying back when it caused his typical big moves, the big headbutt, the big flying goat move of the middle world. Even though we got a wave against the Dump Saber one time, but indeed. Despite D-Bot's best attempts, Orton, of course, came flying back with his big moves. The Eggman DDT in many attempts at the RKO after that DDT, but indeed, D-Bot would cut him with some backslides. Quick, like I said, this is where the, excite the, the fight really got going. You know, back and forth. Near fall, counter after counter. Great move after great move for both these guys. Just a very intense main event on wall with big implications if Brian were to have won. Because, of course, you know, d Bryan would get another shot at the title. I kind of made a pretension that d Bryan should win the Royal Rumble. A few weeks back in one of my videos, they should win the Royal Rumble. I hope he does win the Royal Rumble. Especially after the match would end. We would have a great match with a bad ending. With d Bryan, near towards the end, d Bryan after, you know, Orton came flying back. d Bryan would, of course, do the flying go move. Do a miss a drop kick. I also like when the crowd did like the, yes, no, with the uppercut. You know, they, like I said, decent matchup. With a bad ending. d was going for the big kicks. After the flying goat move. In the in initial drop kick. d was coming with the big chest kicks. You know the. Yes. 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 Uh, yes. He missed the last one. Then Orton after that last miss. Low balls d -Bye. Disqualification. Shitty ending. You know for a great matchup to end with Orton. Purposely getting himself disqualified. And what was a decent great main event on Raw, he got the low blow in on d by cross DQ. He ripped Charles Robinson. He probably doesn't, he probably did it because he cannot be d by without cheating. He cannot be d by without anybody interfering. He has to be d by in a one-on-one -on -one fair matchup. You know, he has to have somebody help him, like a Triple H or Shawn Michaels. But then as Owen was celebrating his little cheap, cheap move, d by wins by DQ, of course. Here comes... John Cena to the rescue! Terry 8! And RKO! When D-Boy laid out, because Cena laid out, that's how we would end off Orton standing tall above both d by and Cena after the Cena save went to an RKO from Orton. As we end war with a triumphant Orton standing tall despite like this cheap, sly move to save himself from d by winning again. But like I said, it could be a good segue. It could be a great, great seed planted for d by to win the war. Well, Bull, or maybe get a... Either, let me say this. I predict that d by will get a future WWE World Heavyweight Championship match. It's either going to be at WrestleMania 
if he wins the Royal Rumble or at the Royal Rumble. One of those two scenarios. d -Bly, I guarantee and I predict, will get a match for the title against Orton, either at Mania or at the Rumble. I guarantee it. Or maybe Elimination Chamber. Who knows? But I think d -Bly will get a championship match. Do I think that D-Bly will get a championship match? Yes! 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 So there's my thoughts on that and my thoughts in my review of Monday Night Raw this evening. Thank you all very much for watching with that in mind. You've all been attacked by the review from Zach. Thank you all very much for watching. Have a great rest of your week. Go Lions! Hopefully, with this field goal here, from the Ravens attempting a field goal here, if they win it, you know, this could go here, but uh, let's see what happens here. I'm actually going to... You're actually going to view my reaction of the Lions' final seconds of this game. I'm actually going to... And the... Oh, the field goal's good. Lions lose. The Ravens got the field goal. 18-16. Wow, heartbreaker for the Lions. That great touchdown comeback. Lions lose again. But with that in mind, once again, thank you for watching and seeing my reaction to that Lions final move as I was making this review. Thank you very much for watching again. Yes! 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 Yeah!